Good morning, everyone, and you're very welcome to today's webinar. For those of you who have just logged on, we have already completed a sound test. And thanks to everyone who helped out with that. So first of all, I want to introduce ourselves. My name is Rachel Hines, and I'm the marketing manager here at Thesaurus Software. And also joined by me today is Karen Bennett, who is the chief commercial officer at Thesaurus Software. One year after the introduction of the Temporary Wage Subsidy Scheme, or TWIS, the revenue reconciliation process is finally underway. Therefore, first up on the agenda today, we are going to look at the TWSS reconciliation process. After that, we're going to go through a quick recap of the EWSS and some hot topics. Next is key lessons learned, where we will look at some of the key lessons that payroll processors have learned over the past year. And finally, we will look at practical guidance on how to use BrightPay Connect and Thesaurus Connect to its full potential to improve the efficiency of your payroll as we continue to process payroll in a pandemic. Finally, at the end of the webinar, we will have a questions and answers section where we will answer any questions that you may have. For our questions and answers session, we will be joined by Paul Byrne, who is the Managing Director here at the Sora Software, Audrey Mooney, who is our Customer Support Manager, and Laura Murphy, who is our Chief HR Officer. If you do have any questions, you can type them into the questions box on your control panel at the side of the screen, and we will try to get through as many questions as possible. Just to note, we have a lot of attendees logged on to today's webinar, so we may not have a chance to answer every single question. This webinar is being recorded and all attendees will receive an email later today with a link to the recording of the webinar. So it's no problem if you do need to leave at any stage. Also in the email later today, there will be a copy of the presentation slides that we are using, or you can also download the slides right now if you wish on the handouts tab on your control panel. We will also include some useful documents and additional resources in the follow-up email later today. So now that all the housekeeping is out of the way, we may as well get straight into the webinar. And I'm going to pass you over to Karen to start off with the TWSS reconciliation. Thanks, Rachel, and good morning, everyone. The Temporary Wage Subsidy Scheme, also known as the TWSS or TWIS, was introduced in March of last year, enabling employers that were affected by the pandemic to receive a subsidy from the government in a bid to keep their employees on the payroll throughout the pandemic. The scheme was in operation from the 26th of March 2020 to the 31st of August 2020. And there were two parts to the scheme, the transitional phase and the operational phase. During the first six weeks of the scheme, known as the transitional phase, revenue operated a simplified process so that employers could be supported as quickly as possible. Employers received a flat rate subsidy of 410 euro per week for each employee that they had made a PRSI Class J9 submission for, regardless of the amount of the subsidy actually paid to the employee. Now, in a lot of cases, this amount exceeded the subsidy that the employee was entitled to receive. This meant that there was an overpayment built into the transitional phase of the scheme. Employers were advised to hold the balance for a future refund back to revenue. During the operational phase, which began on the 4th of May, revenue calculated the average net weekly pay and TWSS values for each employee based on employer payroll submissions. And revenue provided employers with the rele relevant employee information to use when calculating each employee subsidy. 
This ensured the correct subsidy amount should have been paid to the employer for each employee in the operational phase. So what was the TWSS reconciliation? The reconciliation process is essentially revenue's method of rectifying any overpayments made to employers throughout the duration of the scheme. Approximately 90% of the recon reconciliation balances directly relate to the transitional phase of the scheme, where employers were paid €410 Euro per week for each eligible employee. At the time of joining the TWSS, employers made a declaration that they would repay any excess subsidy payments arising. Employers were also advised that a reconciliation of subsidy payments made under the TWSS would take place after the scheme had finished. There are two, phase, two phases to the TWSS reconciliation process. For stage one, employers were required to report the actual subsidy that they paid to employees on each pay date and the deadline for submitting this to revenue was the 31st of October 2020. For stage two of the reconciliation process, revenue compared the total subsidy amounts paid to employees against the subsidy amounts paid to the employer. This enabled revenue to determine the amount of TWSS owed back to revenue from employers. Since the 22nd of March 2021, most employers can now access their TWSS reconciliation balances in ROS. The reconciliation balance is based on the actual information provided to revenue by the employer. Approximately 44% of employers who availed of the TWSS do not have any balance to repay or are due further TWSS payments from revenue, while 56% of employers have a reconciliation balance to repay. Employers have until the end of June to accept the reconciliation calculated issued by revenue, make corrections to payslips if necessary, or make an inquiry through my inquiries. Revenue are strongly recommending that employers take the time to read and understand the guidance before accepting the reconciliation amounts. Uh, back over to you, Rachel. Thanks, Karen. After you have received the Ross inbox notification telling you that your reconciliation information is available, you can access this in Ross under Employer Services. The reconciliation screen will reflect your current reconciliation position. The information shown will vary depending on the information that you have submitted to date and your balance. If you have reported the subsidy paid information on all J9 payslips, the reconciliation screens will show the summary information, allowing the employer to review and accept the reconciliation. However, if you have not yet reported the subsidy paid data for all J9 payslips, or if your reconciliation is not yet available, you will be given the option on the actions that you need to take. If you have reported the subsidy paid information on all J9 payslips, then the reconciliation screens will show the summary information. So here is total TWSS amount paid to you by revenue, total TWSS amount payable in respect of your employees, or essentially this is the total subsidy that you were entitled to receive as calculated by revenue. Next is total TWSS paid by you to employees, and you can cross-reference this figure with the payroll software which we will look at later. And finally, at the bottom, here is TWSS owed to revenue, or if there is TWSS owed to the employer, then this will be displayed in place of TWSS owed to revenue. 
It's also important to be aware that the summary information does not include any TWSS repayments that you have already repaid to revenue in relation to the TWSS. If the TWSS amount paid to you by revenue equals the total amount payable in respect of your employees, then this reconciliation is balanced. Also, revenue are not pursuing companies that owe a balance of under 500 euro. And so if the TWSS amount paid to you by revenue does not exceed the total TWSS amount payable in respect of your employees by more than 500 euro, then revenue considers this reconciliation to be balanced, meaning no balance is payable. Further down the screen, you can download the reconciliation detail CSV file, and this contains a complete record of the TWSS related payslip information provided by the employer at payslip level and revenues reconciliation calculation. If you are satisfied with the information in the reconciliation result, you should click the Accept Reconciliation button. When you accept a reconciliation, Revenue will combine the TWSS reconciliation result with any repayment that you have already made to Revenue, and a statement of account will be sent to your Ross inbox the following working day. If your reconciliation is balanced, by accepting the reconciliation, you will finalize your participation in the TWSS. If an additional amount of TWSS is due to the employer, revenue will process this and the additional payment will be made to the nominated bank account of the employer. And it's also worth noting that this amount isn't automatically refunded you do need to accept the reconciliation for revenue to refund this amount to you. If there is an amount owed back to revenue, the employer can pay the amount owed via RevPay in Ross, or alternatively, eligible employers can avail of debt warehousing. For employers already availing of debt warehousing, this liability will be automatically warehoused when they accept the reconciliation. If you think that the information that you previously provided is incorrect and that the reconciliation balance is therefore incorrect, you should review the subsidy paid data previously submitted and make any corrections required. Where you do make corrections to the payroll, you won't need to upload the TWSS reconciliation CSV file to Ross again. These corrections will be reflected on the correction PSR that will be sent to revenue. And this will result in a revised reconciliation balance, which will immediately be available in Ross. And I'll pass you back to Karen again. Okay. Employers cannot accept their reconciliation until all subsidy data has been reported. Therefore, if you have not already done so, you must take action to submit the subsidy paid in respect of all J9 payslips, and you must also report any subsidy payment that was made on a non-J9 payslip, regardless of the PRSI class. If you have not submitted the subsidy paid data in respect of either some or all J9 payslips, you will be asked to download the reconciliation detail CSV file and identify all active payslips that show an unreported subsidy paid and submit the missing subsidy paid information to revenue. You can see here that the total TWSS amount payable in respect of your employees is zero. And on the CSV file, it's also saying that the subsidy paid is unreported. So this is an example of where no subsidy paid has been reported to revenue. And unless you amend this, revenue will recoup the full amount. 
To rectify this, you simply need to submit the subsidy page report and the reconciliation summary and the reconciliation detail CSV file will be adjusted in real time to reflect this. While the majority of employers will be able to access their TWSS reconciliation balance, revenue are still calculating the reconciliation balance for a small number of employers, including employers that have raised issues with revenue, which revenue is processing, when this process is complete and the reconciliation is available, then the employer will receive a ROS inbox notification. It also includes employers that revenue is engaging with, awaiting further information from before the reconciliation can be made available. These employers are encouraged to check their My Inquiries and provide any such requested information. When an employer's reconciliation is not yet available, the reconciliation detail CSV file will include the information provided by the employer, but it will not include the reconciliation information until that employer's reconciliation is ready. When their reconciliation is available, the employer will receive a ROS inbox notification. By the 30th of June 2021, Employers must have reviewed their reconciliation information, made any necessary corrections, and have accepted their reconciliation. If no action is taken by the 30th of June, the reconciliation will be treated as final. If the subsidy paid information is not provided by the 30th of June 2021, then revenue will take action to recover all TWSS payments made to the employer plus related interest charges. If an employer has reported all subsidy paid data before the 30th of June, but has not accepted the result of the reconciliation, a notification will be issued for any amounts due to be repaid to revenue per the reconciliation calculation and normal collection and enforcement processes will begin. Back over to you, Rachel. As I mentioned earlier, the total TWSS paid by you to employees should match the subsidy paid figure on your payroll software. This should have been reported to revenue using the TWSS CSV file, and you can confirm this figure matches by running the report in the payroll software again. So looking here at the Thoris Payroll Manager, to view this amount in the payroll software, go to Reports, followed by TWSS Report. And first here, we need to enter the date range required. I'll say the 1st of March, 2020 to 31st of August, 2020, and click Prepare. Here you will see a list of all the subsidy amounts paid to your employees in each of the different pay periods. Here I just have one employee, but if I scroll down to the bottom of this report, you can see there is a total figure here. And this will allow you to check to see if the figure for total TWSS paid by you to employees on your TWSS reconciliation summary matches the total subsidy figure in the payroll software. If the figures don't match, as I mentioned, a correction may be required and a new submission made to revenue for that pay period. However, if this figure is correct and one of the other figures on the TWSS reconciliation summary is causing the incorrect reconciliation amount, you will need to contact revenue through my inquiries. We have no way of knowing how much the subsidy you actually received from revenue. We just know how much you paid to employees. Next, I'm going to show you this in BrightPay and the process is very similar. You can check the amount of the subsidy paid to your employees by going to the employees tab then reconciliation CSV file. 
Here, the dates have defaulted to the entire duration of the scheme, and I'm going to click Continue. And finally, like the Thoris Payroll Manager, you can see a summary of all the subsidy payments made to each employee, each pay period. And at the bottom of the screen, you will see a total figure, which you can cross check with the amount of the subsidy paid to employees on your TWSS reconciliation summary in Ross. As I mentioned earlier, employers do have until the 30th of June to accept the reconciliation amounts. Revenue strongly recommend that employers take the time to read and understand the guidance before accepting the reconciliation. And I'll pass you back to Karen again. Okay, so that's it for the TWSS reconciliation. And now we want to have a quick recap of the existing scheme, the Employment Wage Subsidy Scheme or EWSS or EWIS. The Temporary Wage Subsidy Scheme was replaced by the Employment Wage Subsidy Scheme from the 1st of September. And I think we can all agree that the EWSS is a much simpler scheme to operate to understand and it is a lot more intuitive overall. EWSS is a subsidy paid to an employer, not the employees, so it will not show up on a payslip or in my account. This also means that it won't have the same tax implications for employees, as was the case with the TWSS, where many employees faced tax shortfalls at the start of this year. So overall, the EWSS is a much better scheme. The EWSS provides a flat rate subsidy to qualifying employers based on the numbers of paid and eligible employees on the employer's payroll. At the moment, the scheme is due to end on the 30th of June 2021. It is not yet known whether or not the scheme will be extended beyond this date because at the moment, the legislation only allows for the scheme to be in operation until the end of June, and the legislation would need to be amended for the scheme to be extended. To be eligible for the scheme, businesses are required to compare financial projections for the period from January to June 2021 to the actual reported turnover for the same period in 2019. Businesses must expect to experience a 30% reduction in turnover or customer orders between the 1st of January and the 30th of June 2021, compared with the actual reported turnover or customer orders during that same period in 2019 in order to be eligible for the scheme. Employers must continue to review their eligibility status on the last day of every month to ensure they continue to meet the eligibility criteria. As lockdown restrictions ease, it's important to remember that if you no longer qualify, you should deregister for EWSS with effect from the following day, that being the first of the month. As you are no longer eligible, the EWSS markers should not be included in payroll submissions to revenue. If circumstances change the following month and you are once again eligible, you can re-register and claim from the date of re-registration. Just to note, it is not possible to backdate the claim to, inclu to include the period of deregistration, as that correctly reflected the employer's expectation at that time. Back over to Rachel. Under the EWSS, employers receive a flat rate subsidy per employee per week, depending on the employee's gross weekly pay. And for the first couple of months of the scheme, the subsidy payable was €203 Euro or 151.50, depending on the employee's gross weekly earnings. However, in October, the subsidy rates increased, ranging between €203 Euro and €350. Euro. <clears throat> These revised weight, 
rates of the subsidy provided by the EWSS will remain in place until the 30th of June 2021. The subsidy is not available for employees whose gross weekly earnings are less than €151.50 or greater than €1,462. Where the scheme is being operated, an indicator will be included on the payroll submission to revenue to indicate which employees you wish to claim EWSS for. On receipt of the submission, revenue will calculate the subsidy payable based on the employee's gross pay, the pay frequency and the insurable weeks. EWSS payments will generally be paid into the designated bank account of eligible employers within two working days after receipt of the payroll submission. There continues to be a 0.5% rate of employer PRSI, which applies for employments that are eligible for the subsidy payment. Employer PRSI must be calculated as normal through the payroll, for example, on PRSI class A1. Revenue will then calculate the PRSI credit by calculating the difference between the employee's rate reported via the payroll software and the 0.5% rate. This credit will then show on the statement of account within Ross and reduce the employer's liability to revenue. Moving on now to a few hot topics. One area of confusion recently has been in relation to a difference in the subsidy being received and what is due to be paid to employees. In some scenarios, the employer will receive a subsidy greater than the wages that they are paying. They will not have to repay that money to revenue. The employee should only be paid the wages that are due and not anything extra. And in some other scenarios, the subsidy received from revenue will be less than the wages that they are paying. Another hot topic at the moment is the pandemic unemployment payments. And as lockdown restrictions are gradually being lifted, more and more employees will be returning to work and are now active on the payroll. In contrast to the year 2020, PUP is taxed in real time during 2021, in line with other taxable DSP payments. This process ensures tax is collected on the payment at the right time and limits any additional liabilities at the end of the year. Any tax due is collected by reducing the person's tax credits and rate bands. To do this, revenue annualizes the weekly amount of PUP by multiplying the weekly amount by 52 and the annual tax credits and rate band are reduced by this amount. The adjusted tax credits and rate band are applied on a week one basis and only for the duration of the PUP. When an employee returns to work, they must close their PUP claim online immediately. And after DSP reports to revenue that they are no longer making PUP payments to you, Revenue will update the RPNs to the employee's normal entitlements with the rate band and tax credits on a week one basis. It's also important to be aware that employees will remain on zero tax credits for two weeks after returning to work due to PUP being paid in arrears and the PUP week going from Friday to Thursday. The RPNs for these employees will remain on a week one, month one basis for the remainder of the year, unless a caseworker determines it's okay to move them back onto cumulative. As always, employers must use the RPNs issued by revenue. They cannot deviate from it. And I will include a link in the follow up email later today explaining this in more detail with some examples of the various calculations. I'll pass you back to Karen again. Okay, so looking back at our agenda, next we're going to have a look at some of the key lessons 
that payroll processors have learned over the past year. If there's anything that lockdown and the requirement to work from home has taught us, it's the importance of remote access. In addition to being able to process your payroll in the office or from your business premises, you now not only want, but need to be able to access your payroll data from home. Your payroll software should easily facilitate remote working with additional user access. Just to note, both Thesaurus Payroll Manager and BrightPay can be installed on up to 10 PCs per license key. And this means that payroll processing is possible for up to 10 users or from 10 different locations. So this is very handy if you do have a number of employees working from home, all needing to access the payroll software. We have also introduced new multi-user features that work in conjunction with our optional cloud add-on Connect to improve the working from home experience. Connect can be used with both Thesaurus Payroll Manager and BrightPay, and, those, and these new features are available on both systems. So we now have a version checking feature when opening an employer file, and we also have an other users check, again, when opening an employer file. Next, we have the importance of using reliable software from a reliable company. At Thesaurus Software, we have kept both Thesaurus Payroll Manager and BrightPay up to date to cater for the relevant scheme changes. And we've really tried to automate as much as possible in the payroll software to make your life easier. In a recent survey, we achieved 98.7% rating for our overall handling of COVID-19, including our, our customer support, our payroll upgrades, these COVID-19 webinars, and our online support. We were also delighted to win a COVID-19 Hero Award, and this is down to our response to COVID-19 and how we have helped our customers throughout the past year. Another aspect of payroll that has been very topical this year is the importance of payroll backups. As most businesses are now working remotely, it leaves many businesses exposed to data loss. If you only keep your payroll data on your desktop, you are at risk of losing your information. One of the main advantages of having cloud access is that you can back up your payroll data instantly. Connect will automatically back up your payroll data to the cloud, allowing you to restore your payroll data should the unforeseen happen. It's simply an added layer of data protection to safeguard your payroll information. If you are not using the Connect add-on, just make sure that you are creating manual backups known as snapshots in BrightPay or with Thesaurus Payroll Manager, you are prompted to take a backup after sending the PR, PSR to revenue. So it's always recommended to take a backup of your payroll to an external, an external location, for an example, an external device, a server or a cloud environment, rather than just to your PC. This ensures that your payroll data is saved elsewhere and can be reinstated in the event that you suffer a PC breakdown or a crash. With Thesaurus Payroll Manager, Bureau users will have the option to back up all companies on a file at the same time. This facilitates a one-off backup function and saves the user the time-consuming task of backing up all companies individually. Finally, we have the importance of automation. Whether you're an employer processing your payroll in-house or an accountant or payroll bureau who processes payroll for a number of clients, I think it's clear to say that payroll processors across the country have had an added workload this year. Not only have you had the added workload of processing subsidy payments, but you've also had to keep up to date with the various changes to the wage subsidy scheme and the other government incentives. It's now more important than ever to automate payroll tasks. 
by eliminating time wasted on repetitive admin tasks, you now have the opportunity to counteract the time spent learning about these scheme changes. So now is the perfect time to try and introduce new processes and make the leap to automated payroll workflows that really do save time. Um, back to you, Rachel. Thanks, Karen. So this brings me nicely into the final section of today's webinar, which is practical guidance on how you can use Connect to its full potential to improve the efficiency of your payroll. I know we've touched on Connect a few times throughout the webinar, but just to explain it a little bit more, Connect is an optional add-on that works alongside both BrightPay Payroll and Thesaurus Payroll Manager. The payroll is still processed on the desktop application, but the payroll information is stored online on a secure cloud server. So rather than talk you through what Connect can do, I'm going to jump into the software to show you how it works. And I do know that some of you on today's webinar are already using Connect. And if you are, feel free to go make a quick cup of tea or coffee. It should only really take a couple of minutes and then we'll get to the questions and answers. So here we are in BrightPay payroll software. And the first feature that I want to mention today is our improved multi-user functionality to reduce the risk of conflicting copies. When you open the payroll, Connect will automatically check to see if there is a more up-to-date version of the employer file. In other words, where someone else in your organization worked on that employer, or maybe even you worked on that employer from a different computer. If a more up-to-date version is available, you will be given the option to download and use the most recent version or continue using my version. The software will also notify you if another person is currently in the employer file. You can be notified when the other person has finished and it will also tell the other user that you are waiting to access the payroll. Or the second option here is to continue and away. And if you choose this option, it will notify the other user and prevent them from syncing any pending changes to the payroll software. This functionality, the other users check and the version check, is also available in Thesaurus Payroll Manager. I'm just using BrightPay today for demo purposes. It's also important to note that you need to be using either Thesaurus Connect or BrightPay Connect to have this functionality. As Karen mentioned, Connect will automatically back up your payroll data to the cloud where it is stored securely and a chronological history of all backups is kept and you can restore a cloud backup at any time if needed. Here I'm going to go to employer dashboard and this is what the online employer dashboard looks like with both BrightPay Connect and the Thesaurus Connect. The first thing we come to here is notifications and here I have an annual leave request from an employee. Employees can request leave anywhere, anytime, directly from their smartphone or tablet. And you can set up line managers or department managers to approve leave requests for employees within their department without having to access the payroll information. Also on the notifications panel, we have a request to approve the payroll and another to submit the payroll entry. And this particular feature is only available with BrightPay Connect, not the Thesaurus Connect, and it is designed for bureaus and accountants. So you can request information from your clients and the client can log in and submit the data or approve the payroll through the secure online portal. You'll see these tabs across the top of the screen and first is employees. And here you can click into each individual employee's profile to access their payslips and personal details. Next is reports and any report that is set up and saved on the payroll software will be available here. 
Next is the calendar, which is a company-wide employee calendar, giving you an overview of all past and scheduled leave for employees. Within revenue payments, you can see how much is owed to revenue and a breakdown of how it's calculated. And finally is documents. And here you can upload any type of document or resource that you want to distribute to your employees. You can communicate with employees who are working from home and you can also upload, for example, COVID-19 policies and working from home policies. And just to note, our sister product, Bright Contracts, has recently been updated to include a COVID-19 vaccine policy. And this is in addition to the COVID-19 response plan and temporary working from home policies currently available on Bright Contracts. You can also send notifications to employees and monitor the date and timestamp of when the employee accessed the resource or document. So that's the online employer dashboard and the employees also have access to a self-service portal which they can log into on an internet browser or on a smartphone and tablet app. And the app is available to download for free on any Android or iOS device. The employee will receive notifications on their device when new payslips are available, and they'll also get notifications when a HR document has been shared with them or when an annual leave request has been approved. Within the app, the employee can go into documents to view payroll and HR documents, including a full payslip library. They can view their past and scheduled leave and request leave in the calendar, or they can view and update their personal details to ensure GDPR compliance. So it's a really powerful app with self-service features so that the employee can do a lot of the admin heavy tasks themselves rather than coming to you, for example, for lost payslips or leave balance inquiries. So I'm going to finish up there with the sales plug, but if you do want to find out more, we do run online demos of both the payroll software and the Connect add-on on a daily basis. So please let us know if you do want to book onto one of those free demos. So that brings us to the end of the presentation today and we've covered a lot on today's webinar, but we will send everyone an email later today with a link to the recording of the webinar and a copy of the slides. So it's now time for the questions and answers. And if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the questions box and we will try to get through as many questions as possible. For our questions and answers today, we have Paul Byrne, who is the Managing Director here at Thesaurus Software, and Audrey Mooney, who is our Customer Support Manager. We also have Laura Murphy in the background too, for if there are any employment law questions, and Laura is our Chief HR Officer. So Audrey, I know you've been keeping an eye on the questions as they've been coming in, so I'll pass it over to you to manage the questions. Thanks, Rachel, and good morning, everyone. Um, OK, so we'll just make a start on the questions there. So the first question is, um, is there any way an employer can find out directly from Ross what each employee owes revenue at the end of 2020 without having to ask each individual employee? Yeah, Audrey, I'll take that one. Uh, Paul here, good morning, everyone. Um, basically, the answer to that is no. It would be extremely handy if you could do so. But unfortunately, GDPR and all that sort of thing, uh, revenue wouldn't be able to get, give out that sort of information. And even if they did give out that information, it would be difficult to know exactly how much of the liability um, is related to uh, TWIS or PUP, um, because you know there's complications related to joint assessment, maybe other sources of income which come into play. So unfortunately, as I can say, in relation to specific question, the answer is no, unfortunately. Thank you, Paul. Um, the next question is, will revenue write to all employees who have a TWIS tax liability? Well, basically, that's provided through the statement of account, isn't it, Audrey? Um, yes. Yes, the employee needs to, to log in to their my account and 
and uh, look at you know whatever the liability is there. And again, they need to try and figure out exactly. And in a lot of cases, I suppose in ninety percent of cases, it would be fairly evident that you know the only other the, the only other form of income giving rise to liability is in relation to twigs or pulp. Um, so you know, unfortunately, as I said as I said previously. There are other cases where there's other income involved, there's joint assessment involved, which uh, complicates the situation, unfortunately. Yeah, and I don't know if, if somebody isn't registered for my account at some point, maybe they will write out to them, Paul, I'm not sure. Yes, absolutely, yeah. You know, it's possible, but um, I suppose that'll come down the line. Um, okay, so the next question there is, should TWIS be shown as other income or be offset in the wages nominal in our accounts? Okay, putting my accountant hat on. Um, I'm glad I would you're there. Say, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, basically, TWIS was something that the employer was paying to the employee on behalf of revenue, so to speak. Um, so the, the 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 money that coming in to the employer in, in relation to those payments, to my mind, should be just all set against that in the uh, wage and salaries. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next question there is, is there a way to post the PAYE refunds to Tesaurus so the reports from Tesaurus and the trial balance agree? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure um, this, this, what the, the exact question is here, but I, I know in Tesaurus you can post a negative payment, which is you know, equivalent to a refund. Um, so I don't know whether that, that, that would solve the issue there. Yeah, I think possibly it could. Um, Okay, the next question there is, Revenue told me that on reviewing the reconciliation, the subsidy paid data as reported by you for numerous weeks is nil. I don't understand what this means. Can you enlighten me? Um, so it sounds like either the, I suppose the CSV file perhaps wasn't uploaded or wasn't uploaded for the full period. Um, so it's probably just worthwhile creating that CSV file again and uploading it, would you think, Paul? Yeah, and I think, um, I think in some cases where you know, somebody might not receive a payment and they, their actual pay was zero in a particular week, there would have been, um, you know, there would have been nil subsidy as well. Um, but, you know, still there's a J9 going in against it. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, okay. I suppose, when you, when you think back, um, when the J9 started, it started with a, basically a flat rate, um, which was really, really simple. Um, then the politicians and Department of Finance got involved and tried to make it really complicated to, to ensure that certain people couldn't get paid too much and other people had to get paid a certain minimum or whatever. And um, so it actually got quite complicated. But you know, all we could do was put the messaging into the software to to alert people to you know what the, the correct amount of subsidy should be paid uh, in any particular week or month based on the information we had within the software. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, the next question there is, uh, if you have been on eWiz and come off in May because your turnover is up, do you have to pay back eWiz for the previous four months that you have claimed? Uh, no, no. If, 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 if you've made your calculations in relation to your, you know, when you did the assessment at the end of each month um, and you looked at your, your future projections and you did it on a reasonable basis in good faith, uh, you're entitled to claim eWiz based on, on, on that, you know, the, the appropriate reduction in turnover, and um, that's fine. And if you make the assessment at the end of April and see that, okay, this is no longer the case, it's fine to go off eWiz then, but you don't have to repay what, you, what, you've, already, what you've already gotten in that case. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, in the case of the employer paying employees tax liability on TWIS, some employees are having difficulty getting confirmation of their liability as they are jointly assessed. Do you have any guidance on this? Yeah, I think Audrey, really all you can do is, is, is look at maybe what the, the employee's marginal rate of tax yeah. at USC would have been. Best and estimate, yeah. Yeah, best estimate and just keep a note of it if, you know, in case revenue are looking for any of that proof at a later date. But then um, I say, you know, revenue themselves wouldn't even be able to figure out in a lot of cases. Mm. Um, okay, the next question there is, there are variances between the TWIS amounts paid by revenue to us as employers and the amounts we gave to our employees. 
These variances mainly occur in the original transitional phase of the scheme in March, April 2020. And in most cases, the amount we gave employees was higher than the sum received by revenue. This appears to result in our employees being taxed on amounts higher than actually received from revenue. Can we submit supplementary pay slips for, for our employees for the March, April 2020 period, correcting the TWIS amounts paid to reflect the reconciliation figures? Uh, oh God, this sorry, this is very, very long. Um, yeah, it's a, well, it's a good question. But I think it basically comes back to, um, I suppose, the, the fundamental sort of rules of EY modernization where you, you must, ref, you, you know, the, the actual PSORs must reflect what actually happened. Um, the so, you know, yeah, if somebody was actually overpaid subsidy and that was reported on a PSR, um, I don't think there's any any facility to correct that or revenue wouldn't like, like you to correct it because your, I'd say the original submission was actually reflecting what actually happened. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're quite insistent. You can't rewrite history. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, the next one there is, I have received the following message from Ross in relation to an overpayment, which I have received retwiz. Full tapering was applied as the gross pay was in excess of the limits set out in the parameters of the scheme. Can you explain this before I contact Ross again? Well, it's basically just coming back to the rules that would have applied um, during the transitional phase. Um, and again, I think we would have we would attempt to highlight those issues within the software at the time. Um, that you know, if you paid over a certain amount, uh, that tapering would have applied. And uh, you know, I, I don't know was a case maybe that, that that was ignored. Or again, the other issue that can happen here is that uh, the A or NWP calculations are based by what we have in the software for January and February. And, and you know, there may be other employments. Uh, that uh, would have applied to the employees, which <clears throat> would have given a different calculation and, and, and perhaps would have uh, triggered the tapering if we had have had that other information as well. I don't know what's, what's your take on that, Audrey? Yeah, well, I suppose the these additional employments didn't come into effect until the operational phase. You know, during the transitional phase, it, the employer just had to act on, I suppose, you know, the information that they had. Um, so I think that would have only applied then for the operational phase. And at that point, you know, revenue were telling how much you could pay. So the same kind of, I suppose, warning messages were within the software. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not okay. really sure. Yeah, because when we used to give the print screens of, you know, this is what you're allowed to pay. If you pay this, your subsidy bill will be reduced to this. You know, we were quite um, open, I suppose, about, you know, the impact of paying more. But I suppose we, we did give the, the, the option for people to put in whatever figure they wanted, I suppose, even though we were warning, you know, that there was, mm -hmm. you know, the different figure was the limit. We had to allow an override, yeah. Um, okay, the next question there is, on a previous webinar, you advised that the preference is for employers to pay the tax liability amount directly to the employee, and the employee then pay it to revenue. Why is this option advised over the second option? Well, I guess it, it, it's probably the easiest um, to apply for start, because uh, otherwise you're again you have to create a different PSR at the end of the year to uh, up the amount of tax in USC for that employee. So just going back to the, the, the what we're advising is yeah yeah pay the employee the amount keep a record of it. The employee doesn't necessarily have to pay that straight over revenue. Uh, revenue have actually confirmed that the employee can benefit from that cash flow and have the the four year uh, reduction to their tax credits start from next year. Um, so, you know, a lot of cases, the employee might prefer to do it that way. Um, but it's, again, it's not up to the employer to force the employee to actually pay that there and then. I don't know if you have any other opinions, Audrey. Yeah, no, I think we just strongly felt it was a simpler option. You know, it, it's costing you the same amount of money, but, you know, you I suppose you pay it over without having to, you know, change any payroll submissions or yeah. anything. We just felt strongly that it was the simpler option. Yeah. Yeah, it's outside of payroll effectively. Exactly. Um, okay, the next question there is, we had to take an employee off the scheme because the bank would not allow TWIS payment on the pay slips. Is it possible to claim this back before reconciling? I mean, I would say no. Um, <laughs> you know, so again, you can't... You know, it's a question of, again, revenue, don't want you to rewrite history or 
yeah. change the doors in relation to what actually happened. Yeah, and they had it in the guidance quite early that you can't retrospectively claim it. So um, I, I would be surprised, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, the next question there is, um, if employers agree to repay the employee's tax liability for TWIS, is it not the case that some of that liability is caused by revenue giving tax refunds to employees by not using week one during the initial phase? So uh, that should be deducted from what the employers agree to pay on behalf of employees. Yeah, again, I suppose, fortunately, we didn't have to do TWIS or EWIS here, but I mean, if I was, in, in a, if I, as the employer, I would really be looking at a calculation based on whatever the marginal rate is for the employer, or sorry, sorry for the employee, um, and I would actually calculate it myself, you know, based on whatever the, the, the TWIS and, and that was that went through the payroll. Yeah, and I suppose they can give some of it, they don't have to give all of it, it's really, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, the employer's preference of what they want to do, if anything, you know. Yeah, it's the employer's discretion, and, and it's a very generous thing for the employers to do. Absolutely, yeah. Um, okay, so the next question there is, could you give possible reasons for the difference between TWIS payable in respect of your employees and TWIS paid by you to employees? Well, I suppose, again, you know, if the messaging within the software uh, was overlooked or ignored, um, mm -hmm. that, that, that could be one reason. Um, as you said as well, during the operational phase, um, I don't know what there were, you know, the CSV files were coming in too late or whatever. It's, yeah, they were kind of being updated as new information, you know, they, there was a bulk yeah. issue and then they were updated kind of weekly after that and maybe even at some stage daily. So there could be a timing issue between, yeah, another employment, I suppose, being um, yeah. updated. Yeah. It's not, it's not a pity they didn't have time for their systems to, to be able to do, just do e ways from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a mess looking <laughs> back. Been much simpler. <laughs> yeah, it's a total mess when you look back at it, and, and then you, you you have to drill into nearly individual pay slips uh, to try and figure out where the difference is uh, in, in, in the reconciliation. It does make us grateful for what we have now, though. <laughs> um, Although they probably make that complicated as well, by the way. You know, when, once uh, the end of June comes around and they start, you know, to look at, you know, how they're going to get out of it without the cliff edge. You know, it, mm. it probably will have all sorts of other rules involved, but hopefully they won't be too complicated. Fingers crossed. Um, okay, the next question there is the deadline for accepting the reconciliation is the 30th of June 2021, but what is the deadline for making payments due to revenue for TWIS overpayments? Yeah, they basically confirmed that that's the June 2021 as well. In other words, they wouldn't look at charging any interest unless the payment was after that date. Yeah, I don't think it's very clear in their guidance, but maybe they'll update that because uh, we're getting some questions on that too through the support desk, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, the next question there is, I have three items marked unreported. There was zero grant in all three cases. Because there is nothing, nothing in the additional pay section, none of the three are included in the CSV file. Can I upload an extra or supplementary CSV file dealing solely with those three items, or do I need to disclose the detail to revenue via my inquiries? I suppose my first question would be really, are these active pay slips? Um, we're getting a lot of queries in through the support desk, you know, really unreported, but actually a lot of them are pay slips that have been deleted. So it's correct that they're unreported. Um, but if there's unreported active pay slips, um, then, you know, you can just do the CSV file again for either the whole period or those missing uh, dates. You want anything yeah, to add to that, Paul? Yeah. yeah, and I suppose I, I think it's just worth mentioning what deleted means sometimes. Uh, it, you know, at Soros Payroll Manager, when you um, when you say, no, I want to do that week again, and you know, you say you, you made a mistake in the payroll and you want to rerun it and you, you reverse the previous week, what happens there is the, the actual software sends a delete request for the, the first submission, which is then over, you know, superseded by the the next, you know, the, the correct submission. So that's where a lot of deletions could, could have happened. Um, and revenue may have duplicated their 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 subsidy payments uh, for some weeks where that went on. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the next question is quite long, so I'm really just going to, I suppose, <laughs> uh, shorten it down. And it's just really a query in relation to, I suppose, a TWIS that was availed of and then, ref you know, everything refunded back to revenue. Um, and the query is in relation to the J9 uh, records, you know, the J9, sorry, remains on the employee records. Um, so there's a few different things mentioned, and I suppose we can just clarify that uh, the Department of Social Protection will be converting all the J9 pay slips to the employees. Um, I think last PRSI class that was in use before TWIS, isn't that right, Paul? Yeah, so the, the, the don't, they're not at any disadvantage for having J9. No, so it'll be done on their side, but I suppose, yeah, we won't see anything unless you were to log into your My Welfare, maybe. But um, yeah, I suppose they're doing it quietly in the background, I suppose. Um, Okay, the next question is, if employees weekly gross is 151 euros and 50 cent, do we pay 151.50 subsidy or 203? So I suppose this it's really important you. to have e yeah. 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 yeah, no, I do. As you're, you're going to say the same thing as me, that uh, it's basically the employee, the, the 203 is, is a subsidy for the employer. Um, mm. So, you know, if the employee is 151.50, that's what they receive. Yeah, normal wages, yeah, regardless of what the employer will receive, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, the next question is, why after an employee being on pub for two weeks, are they on a week one basis, as they are not getting the overpaid tax back for the previous two weeks with no tax credits? So I suppose that's a revenue <laughs> decision. Um, I think they do that with most of their, or if not all of their taxable DSP payments, um, and I suppose that's just a, a decision that they made. Yeah, and actually, do you know something? It might be a good idea. Um, I know Revenue produced a small video um, on, you know, how that works. Um, so it might even be an idea to send that out, a link to it. Yeah, in the Rachel is going bottom. to include that. Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, okay, the next question there is, um, if a business commenced trading on the 1st of April 2019, what is the comparative period for claiming EWIS in the period January to June 2021? It basically, you apportion um, the, the, the that three month period in uh, in 2019. So, you know, if you're looking at full six months versus uh, the 2019 period, multiply the 2019 period by two to, to get your comparative. Okay. Uh, the next question: Have you any plans to provide an online accounts package? Uh, no, we, we we basically we specialise in payroll, <laughs> so that's where that's where all our efforts are going at the moment. At the moment, we have no plans for that. Okay. Um, the next question there is: I have a lot of unreported subsidy. How do I send that file to revenue from Tesaurus? Will it automatically be updated in revenue? Um, I suppose in your 2020 software, it's just um, it's under reports in the form of Twiz reports, Twiz CSV. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just prepare it there and then upload it to Revenue and it should be updated then immediately. Yeah, yeah I think Revenue basically confirmed that the update applies practically in real time. Yeah. Um, so the next question there is, if you were signed up for Connect 2021, is it possible to back up previous year's payroll? It is. Yeah, so in the portal under settings, there's an option to upload data and that's upload data files for previous years. Um, the next question there, will any of EWIS have to be paid back to revenue? No, it, it wouldn't. And unless, I suppose, on, a, on an audit or a review, um, it was deemed that, you know, you didn't meet the business rules. Um, you know, that uh, you, you should have known that your turnover was going to be uh, too large, you know, to qualify. Um, and, and I don't know how that's going to apply at this stage, you know, we, in relation to the future reviews, it would have to be, I suppose, very obvious that uh, somebody was claiming it incorrectly, you know, they weren't, they weren't entitled to it. Okay. Um, somebody's just asking there, how is the debt warehousing done? Paul, have you any knowledge on that? <laughs> we we'll basically have to, you, you have to apply to, to revenue for that, the Collector General. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know the specifics of the scheme, but effectively the the the, the debt or the the tax liability is you know warehoused uh, and 
it, it can be paid. I, I, I just, sorry, I, I'm answering. I'm not answering uh, from correct knowledge here, so I, no, I'll stop answering that question. Otherwise, I'll be giving the wrong information out. Yeah, I but think I'm there's sure information there's plenty, on the revenue website, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there'll be plenty of information up there. Yeah. Um, there's a few questions there just in relation to uh, payments that have already been made, um, you know, so TWIS that has already been repaid or overpayments that have already been repaid. I suppose people are nervous to accept reconciliation because this payment isn't showing, as I suppose yeah. was covered in the presentation. So I think once they accept the reconciliation, it shows on the statement of account. Isn't that right, Paul? So, I mean, it will. Yes. Yeah. Which is issued overnight, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a pity they didn't show it on the initial reconciliation yeah. screen. Understand that that will give somebody makes somebody very nervous. Absolutely, yeah. Um, okay, uh, somebody's just saying for EWIS the gross is capped when an employee has overtime and exceeds the capped value. How do we deal with that once-off increase? So I suppose if they're over the limits, you know, the employer won't get anything in that pay period. And I suppose if you're using our payroll software, we'll automatically. Uh, yeah. I suppose not include the the tick option for eWiz or the marker for revenue, and it'll automatically show then you know in the next pay period. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, loads of questions have started coming in since uh, we have been answering. I'm just trying to go through them here. Okay, somebody's just asking, will payslip corrections made this year for payslips for 2020 be included in the CSV file for revenue? Um, so I suppose if you're making corrections now in 2020, we'll automatically um, include that information on the PSR, um, so you won't need to, I suppose, update the CSV file. Yeah, and I think even if you did update the CSV file, it wouldn't make any difference because they're the same payroll IDs and so forth. Somebody's just asking, if an employer claims EWIS, should the employee get normal pay if the business is closed? So I suppose there's EWIS, um, I suppose, you know, can be operated for employees, whether they're working or not. Um, but that's really, I suppose, down to, uh, the, I suppose, the employer to decide. Would you agree with that, Paul? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a, that was a question, I think, that came up initially as well, when, when EWIS has been rolled out. And they yeah. were to confirm that it's really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it, it's an agreement between the employer and the employee as to how much they, they will get paid. So, you know, if they're not working, you know, you can still pay them. Yeah. Um, so the next question there, um, are proprietary directors still excluded from having their tax due from TWIS paid by their companies? So I suppose that is still the case at the minute, Paul, but it's very much being discussed at the minute, isn't it? So it possibly yes. could change. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hot topic in revenue. Yeah. <laughs> um, somebody's just asking, can you deregister halfway through the month for eWiz if your turnover is going to be up and would you have to pay the money back for that month? So I think it's very much um, at the end of the month that you have to assess it, Paul, isn't it? Yes, that's that's the guidance, yeah. Mm. I just um, see a question here, uh, Audrey. Um, can we explain what's involved in calculating the TWIS liability based on an employee's marginal rate, please? And, and I guess, okay, most employees, say, who qualified for uh, TWIS, for example, were, were, let's say an employee was 20% marginal rate and the... Uh, their USC, I, I don't know what their their normal USC rate was, but let's say it's actually give me a USC rate, Audrey. I can't even think of them offhand. <laughs> I think one is two and a half. <laughs> yeah, so let's say you know the, normally twenty two and a half percent is the deduction between their 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 PYE and and TWIS, or sorry between PYE and USC. If let's say the total TWIS payments were were three thousand, for example. Just multiply the three thousand by the twenty-two and a half percent, and you've you've got whatever the liability would have been in relation to TWIS. Yeah. Um, somebody is just saying their employees just back last week after being laid off. So I'm assuming on pup, their tax credits are all reduced, and they're all on a week one. So their net pay is substantially reduced now. They are not happy. How do I manage this? 
I suppose that's why revenue really updated that, um, you know, taxation of PUP um, web page and included the video to explain, um, you know, how it is working. Unfortunately, the, you know, there's a timing issue. Um, and yeah, it looks like most people will have two weeks, I suppose, with little or no tax credits. Um, but there's no way around it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Question in there. If staff received excess in pay, why is the company being asked uh, to pay it back and not the staff who received it? So I'm not sure if this is in relation to somebody who was paid too much. Sorry, Audrey, we just lost you there. Employer was paying, you know, operating the payroll and they paid more than they should have done. It is their subsidy that will be tapered. Um, So you broke up there, you were gone for about oh, 15 minutes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, no, I suppose, yeah, there's a question in a couple of times just saying if the employees receive too much money, why are the employers being asked to pay it back? So I'm kind of assuming maybe it's a relation to TWIS where maybe the employer paid more than they were, you know, I suppose allowed to pay and their subsidy was then tapered as a result. And I suppose that was the rules of the scheme at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um. Sorry, there's quite a lot of repeat questions. I'm just going through them just to see, um, just to try and dig out some new ones, I suppose. Um, I think there was a question there in relation to um, uh, revenue inquiries and uh, or PUI inquiries, you know, taking a while to answer. And I think that that is the case. Um, you know, the new working arrangements and working from home and so forth. And um, it's, I think they're just taking a little bit longer to answer queries than, than they would normally. Yeah, and to be fair, it's probably going to get busier, you know, as we, um, there's still a quite a few, quite a few employers due to accept reconciliation. So um, it possibly will be, will get busier. Maybe now is the time to submit those queries to allow time, you know, for them to answer. Yeah, what was the, the, the statistic that Revenue had uh, in relation to uh, the number of reconciliations that are less than 500 um, and you know could be just signed off you know without any liability i think they were saying something like 40 percent was that right audrey 41 percent, i think yeah that are considered balanced so that's that's quite a high number i think we were quite happy to see that yeah yeah but still i think only 16,000 out of roughly 70,000 employers have accepted so there's a long way to go I think we'd be all glad to see the back of this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, Paul, if you see any um, questions there, feel free to um, read them out. Um, yeah, a lot of the questions that I see there are repeat questions, really. Um, so, yeah, I think we might finish up there for today, unless you're seeing any other questions, Audrey, there. Um, there's none jumping out, Rachel. Yeah, I think there's a lot. There's a lot there. A lot of thank yous, which is great. Um, but a lot of the questions that I'm seeing, yeah, we have covered already in some way or another. So, great. So yeah, as I said, we will send out an email later today with a link to the recording of the webinar and a copy of the slides as well. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, and we hope you found it useful. Thank you. Bye. Okay, Thanks, thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye.